on this month's show we tell you how to sound like Jimi Hendrix we talk about picks and fingers we go to the London and Merseyside guitar shows and talk about Malcolm Young and we're giving away a £1,200 valve combo some say he sleeps with a bandana on and on the night he was born, the moon turned a fire red. I recorded Steve playing in a shed in North Wales. sound like Jimi Hendrix. I suppose the first thing to talk about is Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Jimi yeah. Hendrix. This is a big one for Steve <laughs> being as kind of you go to bed wearing bandanas and that kind of thing. All yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. that you do. And yeah. Like capes and things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> first of all, yeah. I think maybe <clears throat> I don't like to say people get things wrong because there's no right or wrong. But, there is, yeah. But you go on YouTube, you see a video of someone telling you how to play a Jimi Hendrix song. Yeah. Note for note. And uh, well, the first thing is Jimi didn't play anything note for note. No. Nope. No. Nope. Uh, played it different every time. Yeah. And the second thing I might say is that. People who want to sound like Jimi Hendrix listen to Jimi Hendrix. Right, okay. Whereas Jimi Hendrix didn't listen to Jimi Hendrix, or he probably did at times. That's a very he good point. He listened to John Lee Hooker, Albert King, classical music. Bob Jeff Dylan. Beck, Bob Dylan. Yeah. Clapton, all the blues stuff, and probably lots of other things. As well. Steve <laughs> Cropper uh, taught him a fair bit as well, because right. he met up with him, and Steve Cropper showed him how to play off chords a lot, right? which uh, is a massive part of Hendrix's playing. Mm. So I think listening to a bit of Steve Cropper and maybe even playing some Motown type stuff, because yeah. he did the rounds as one of those players, didn't he? Mm. He did the rounds playing yeah. things he didn't really want to play, didn't Isley he? Isley Brothers, um, Little Richard, Richard yeah, yeah. Mm. those kind of things, which is you learn stuff from, even if you mm. don't like it. And I think that um, that's part of it. But, you know, if you're saying don't learn it note for note, how do you, I mean, is that, how, how have you learned to play so well like I Hendrix? don't play it properly. <laughs> no, my point is... He does. He does. He really does. Obviously, there's key 
licks and riffs. That if you're playing a Hendrix song in front of it, you've got to play, right? Yeah. But then um, there are times when he just went off. Yes. And it wasn't off her, an album track, was it? You know, it was, no. it was the spur of the moment. It was. And you do was, that. I mean, that's one thing I'd like to say sort of to people that I really think that Steve is the best Hendrix player I've heard since Hendrix. Because when you play with him at a jam, he plays in the style of Yeah, it's not Hendrix. note for note. But it's it, not it, for it's no. something Hendrix could have done on yeah. one of his uh, incarnations of a song. Uh, there are whatever. little, little repeat bits that you kind of um, remember from records, and then you string uh, together bootlegs of live stuff, and and suddenly you're playing that, and then, uh, well, I try and play in, like the style of it, and try, yeah. I've always tried to play the style of it rather than copying it note for note. Hear my train again. massive thing isn't it you well know. with the tremolo arm and that sort of thing yeah yeah and the feedback and the the, the mm. messing around with the switch and he all used to bang the back of the neck didn't he yeah he used to do these here he used to play with the springs on the back yeah yeah to get a certain sound which you do you do all those things i've seen you do yeah that, really. i suppose everyone does things differently don't they they do and yeah. have a different approach to how to do something yeah Apparently, he used to try and copy cartoon noises. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, he wanted to right. make an album of cartoon characters. Yes. Did yeah. he? Yeah. And and I, I think as I say, always trying to come up with new ways of making sound. You know, that was interesting. Obviously, an auditory thinker, I think. Yeah. Even though he was stylish and wore a lot of paisley and stuff like that. But, you know, it's all about mm. what tickles his um, ears. People compare him to people, don't they? And compare people to him. And, uh, you know when people say so and so's best, and I don't agree with that. Different, I think, is the word with all these things. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, Different. totally. You know, I saw a, a clip of Rory Gallagher yeah. on YouTube, and his comments better than Hendrix, and I thought, well, the guy's completely different you know yeah you can't compare the two they're both amazing you yeah know? and the other thing about yeah. Hendrix is people always concentrate on the guitar playing they forget about the yeah. lyrics and the vocal and, and the production and all the creative yeah ideas he had you know yeah flanging and all this kind of stuff with help of clever <laughs> engineers <laughs> yeah. you know coming up of, with this stuff because they a bit of flanging they figured that out themselves you know Eddie Kramer and him uh, had two tapes going and uh, slow one down and speed it back up in right. proportion to the other one and uh, that's um, right? yeah he was kind of at a turning point in guitar technology as well with the mm. Marshall and also with the effects pedals using the fuzz face mm. and everything but having said that nobody did it anything like him and no. nobody's done it since how to sound like Jimi Hendrix yeah uh, now, if you hear Jimi Hendrix playing the guitar, it doesn't matter what guitar he's playing. I mean, it could be a, a six-string or a 12-string acoustic. It could be a Strat through a Marshall. Yeah. It could be a Gibson. 
It's he sounds like Jimi Hendrix. Sounds like it sounds like Jimi Hendrix. It does, On, yeah. It doesn't matter what it is, what gear he's got, what how his pickups are set, <laughs> whether his guitar's upside down or yeah. not, what pedal he's got, so all that stuff. Well, you can do it too. It doesn't matter what guitar Steve's on. No. You can make it sound like Hendrix yes. too. Yes. That's very nice so, here. Well, no, no, I'm it's sure there'll be people who disagree. After a cup of tea, we'll run through Hendrix's setup. A chat and a cup of tea. Quite a famous guitarist died last week. Very, very, quite. Quite famous. Yeah, yeah quite, I suppose, compared to Angus. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, and shadow, yeah. And Shadow is smaller brother. But the backbone thing. of the band, isn't he? Really? Yes, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah amazing. Yeah. Amazing rhythm playing. I mean, it's the chords that really stand out to me, you know, and the riffs mm. that work so well. Yeah, it would have been doubled, um, but the in between bits, there's a little bit of a fill normally from Angus, isn't there? Because yes. can't help but twiddle. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Malcolm did the one pickup thing, which mm. increases the resonance of the guitar because there's less magnetism for the string pull, you know, so mm. it lets them resonate more freely. And then the other thing is he was playing 11s whilst Angus was playing 9s. Right. So I think that makes a big textural difference. So mm. when they're playing the same part on those chords, mm -hmm. it really, really stood out. Um, just as a matter of interest, if it is interesting, trivia, um, uh, I worked with a guy who worked on Back in Black and he said that it was recorded, I sat down. Really? So, yeah, when you have this vision of ACDC, mm. there's very rarely any sitting down going on. <laughs> yeah. Actually, to record it, they were all uh, very, you know, nicely and sedately sat down. Well, if they were drinking yeah. lots as well, while they were recording it, they might have had to sit down. Well, exactly, yeah. yeah. With this, we don't know, but that's, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Back in Black was done, sat down. Well, uh, Malcolm was the lead guitarist in the band, but said he gave up to uh, concentrate on his drinking. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain the sitting down? Yeah, maybe. Possibly. Depending on what drinking mode you're in at the time, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, another interesting thing, I mean, it's to do with Angus's tone, but you were in, telling me in the studio about the engineer uh, as well. Yes, a chap who uh, recorded them. Um, Carmen, very um, uh, good engineer from Liverpool. Um, he, he just set an amp. Uh, Marshall didn't even know what he was doing because he's not a guitarist. Plugged it in. Yeah, that sounds like whatever. Uh, Angus comes in and just picked up the guitar and plays it. And it is undoubtedly Angus Young without touching the amp or the guitar. He just played. It's him. It's in the fingers. That's the message. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's, a, there's a video that I, I've just watched on uh, Angus Young as well, and he's, he's talking about all his influences. He talks about Freddie King, and he says, and Freddie did a bit like this, and then he just plays Angus Young, and it sounds nothing like Freddie King. Yeah. Then he said, oh, and there's Jimi Hendrix, and he played a bit like this, and then just played some Angus Young, you yeah. know. Yeah. Tell us about the radio transmitter. Ah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, apparently he was in the recording studio and they, they, they went to record and uh, Angus was like, that's not my sound. Mm. What, what's different? It's the same guitar, same amp. Um, the only thing I'm missing is my radio transmitter. So they plugged that back in and right. suddenly it was his sound and they realised that he was using it as a boost mm. and it had a slight compression sound. Right. But somebody's kind of turned it into a pedal as usual, but it's a lot of money just for a pedal, but... Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. but I think you could... I'd be interested to try it with a standard radio transmitter seat and using it as a boost. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, not a bad idea, but... You know. Just boosts the frequency, therefore changing the sound, I suppose. Well, no, no, uh, they've got a level output yeah, so on, the, on the receiver. Right. That, so basically, it, it tries to accurately recreate your guitar sound and yeah. send it to the receiver. Yeah. And then that has a level for the output to the amp. Mm. But if you just turn that level up, it's still clean in the box, but it's sending the amp too much signal. They said it compressed the sound more. 
and that could be to do with the radio transmitting receiving side of things or just the electronics in the box even other news uh we, we were at the london guitar show and you uh, too i didn't go yeah you didn't come to that i wasn't one. allowed to you were there in that. spirit yeah it took you it's too early in the morning mm. too early for Steve. <laughs> that's what it was yeah what so, time did you um, leave about five o'clock or something in the morning I don't know. Don't um, ask. <laughs> don't <laughs> ask. <laughs> One of the cool things uh, were the scallop guitars. What was that company called? One of them. What? One of them. One of them. One of them. It's one of them, isn't it? One of them. One of them. One of them. One of them. Yeah. Uh, brilliant, I thought. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing thing. So we originally scalloped a wooden guitar mentally and radically. Yeah. However, Having that much material taken away from a wooden guitar completely and utterly undermined its structural integrity. So any time you went to even put it in a stand like that, it would just be bending out of tune. So we had to re-engineer a neck that could handle having all of the material taken away from it. What that does is, firstly, it makes the neck feel a lot thinner than it actually is. So these are all designed to be wider than a nylon string classical guitar but because it's scalloped mentally into the side, it feels a lot thinner. It's just made out of better stuff than wooden guitars. Metal is more resonant than wood every day of the week. There are no two ways about it. Scalloped guitars are nothing new, but I'm yet to see anyone scallop them as much as we do to give you the full grip that you can get on a note and insane vibrato. On a standard guitar, I'd like to think that you could bend your G on your low E string up to an A, maybe an A sharp at best. On an easy day, I can bend my G on this acoustic up to a D and beyond as far as I want to bend it. They've gone really extreme on the scallops. Right. So there's virtually no neck left. <laughs> so they've had to make it out of aluminium. And the size of it, you can feel these great big, it's like bones, isn't it? It's like out. playing a spinal column. Yeah, it is. Are yeah. the necks made out of aluminium? Well, yeah. it, it's a composite, uh, and he won't tell you what it is. Oh, how does that affect the tone of the thing then? Great sustain. Right. He came and plugged it into our amp on our stand, didn't he? He did. And uh, yeah, it sounded good actually. Yeah. And um, very yeah. good for metal. Yeah, yeah. Very, very good for well, heavy metal, I mean. Heavy metal. Yeah, very good for metal guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was. But, fa fabulous things. But that was an interesting thing. But I think trying it, the, the scallop, you could obviously bend really easily and you could do a, a wider vibrato uh, much faster. Mm. Um, so it, it was good like that. But as far as moving your hands up and down and everything, it's something you'd really have to get used to before you could judge whether it was better or worse. Yeah. I think maybe I see a, a scallop challenge coming up of some kind. Possibly. Perhaps I'll... Uh, Deep fried, preferably. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. like eating scallops, but I might like playing them. So let's find out. Yeah. I'll, I'll scallop a... Cheap guitar and uh, it tends see to make your fingers rather greasy. <laughs> yeah, greasy fingers. <laughs> we had a, a go at Nyad guitars as well. Very nice. He had a flat, completely flat fingerboard, no radius at right. all. Okay. And he was saying that's a good thing. And I think I don't know. For bending, it's a much better thing because the note doesn't choke out on the other frets. You yeah. get used to your fretboard radius, don't you? Yeah. You really do. The old vintage Strat radius, you pick it up and you think, oh, this isn't right. Ooh. And then after about half an hour, you go back to the old, the one you had before, yeah. oh, this ain't right now. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. you get used yeah. to things, don't you? And what's going on with the nut? The nut, well, the nut is a zero fret arrangement. So really what I'm trying to do is just get it to the point where it's sounding great, but it's not putting too much pressure on. And can you tell me, what, what pickup, is it a wooden pickup or is that just a cover? It's a cover and uh, it's basically, it's a Q tuner underneath. I've found that uh, this is just an absolutely amazing pickup. It's hugely transparent and clean, but it, I mean, it'll scream if you want it to. It screams <laughs> incredibly well.
the main amp I was displaying and I was doing a competition for you to win, it's, it's called the Control Freak because it's only got a volume and tone control, but it's really designed to react to what you do on the guitar. So you roll off the, uh, the volume on the guitar and you've got a really nice clean sound that's quite bright, but as you turn up the volume, it'll go on to kind of almost an ACDC style sure. overdrive, but not get too fizzy. Um, so it does a great range of tones just by what you do on the guitar. And so I had it set on that and we were demoing that. And then next thing. <laughs> Everyone stopped to listen, didn't they? Yeah, To yeah. this guy and his mate. Uh, it was quite amazing. Mm. It was a nice moment. You know, one of those nice moments. Mm. Yeah, and the guitar shows, they can be a bit <laughs> competition of the shredders, can't it? Oh, so. yes. Can I just put, a, like, a scenario in front of you and see what you think of this? It's connected with shredders and temperature. Okay. Um, Eskimos. Uh, <laughs> pretty damn cold existence in an igloo. I knew it. Um, I knew it. Eskimo shredders, I'm sh uh, is there any? I mean, when you know when your hands get cold and you, you can struggle to play, can't you? It's yeah. like, you can't play fast. But Eskimo shredders, do they exist? I don't know, you we're going to have to find out. Ask you about that, you know. It, so what you said, like in LA there's a lot of shredders and it's quite hot there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the way they get over it, I do know this is a fact, is seal blubber. Mm -hmm. Hot seal blubber, you know, you stick your hand in it. Ah, Take it straight out, yeah, straight on the fretboard, yeah. it's like fast fret. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, it is fast fret, everyone. Jodo guitars. So there's the full range. The... Quite amazing. That's the punk one with a rude word on it, very sorry. That's the Evil Knievel one. And uh, the LAPD one. Oh. How shiny is this amplifier? What's the cactus all about? Guys, check it out. Well, this is the fan fret. Fan fret is actually quite old concept. The concept which was uh, invented, I think, in 18th century by violin makers. But again, uh, I think first was Novak's in 70s or 80s when he did this instrument with a multiscape. Generally, what it does, you've got two different scales on a low e string, low uh, B string, and a high E string, and in a way, it having a longer scale it complements the low end of a sound low end low end low end uh, instrument have a look like for example violin why it's so small and the double bass why it's so big yeah lovely well done <laughs> made you play kind of fast um, it's fast for me. Yeah. For some of these type wizards, did you out not there, get that's not fast. But to me, that's fast enough. Mm. I mean, you know, how far, how, how long do you want it to take to get to the other side of the fretboard? You know. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it not a, a sport. It's music. Yeah. So uh, you know, yeah, it's great, and uh, had a good time on it. Yeah. yeah. What What about the playing of chords? Didn't try that. I was just fiddling around somewhere in the middle and I eventually worked my way up. Plus. And you didn't get confused? Oh yeah, yeah. slightly. No, it felt very, I, I found that it was just like playing a normal guitar. I think it was, you know, um, probably designed so it just feels natural. Yeah. But it, I didn't find I've it never strange. Tried it, you know? um, uh, uh, the, his, another part of his rationale for using that is that as you slide your hand up the neck, the, the angle of your hand <laughs> changes. <laughs> so that as you get up to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It uh, makes sense, yeah. It's a natural yeah. thing for the hand to... Yeah, so to, if you were playing the chord there, your finger's like that. Yeah. If you're playing it down there, it's like that. Yeah. Hendrix Guitars. We'll talk about his Strat. So obviously he normally played a Strat. What period of Strat did he play? Well, I think in 66, 67, he probably played some early strats, didn't he? 60 he did. strats, always Rosewood boards, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. And then he moved on to sort of 
Yeah, the 66, 67 period strats, didn't they? Yeah. And some, I think they got what they could because they were rare, weren't they? So if yeah. they saw one in a shop, they'd get it, wouldn't they? And yeah. plus he set some of them on fire and things like that. Yeah. That probably didn't Destroyed help. Destroyed a few, didn't he? Yeah. And so. then he switched to the famous uh, big headstock, big logo, so maple it. cap. It was a maple cap, wasn't it? Well, Rather than a maple, one piece maple. That's the thing, yeah. So they didn't have the skunk stripe in the back. No. Like this has. So they put the truss rod in between the two and then put the cap on. And then the other great thing about having the cap is you can flip it. So when they glue it, the grain's going the other way so it becomes a more stable neck. Oh, right. So, so those... it's the same piece of wood. It's just sawn. Yeah. And then, all right, okay. And then glue back together the opposite way round. Okay. So the grain's more stable stable because they're fighting each other yeah it was tom anderson a guy from tom anderson guitars i've met him at the nam show he oh, told right. me about that and they do that ah. on their guitars because they're saying they're the best ones the one with the na maple cap next because right. they're very rare aren't they yeah and there's a theory that they sound somewhere in between the rosewood board and the one piece maple neck guitars right somewhere okay. in between i don't know if that's true black no, one was the favorite wasn't it the black guitar yes he preferred it was to it? the white yeah uh, if you, if you look at pictures of him in 69... Is that why you why play a black no, guitar? No, it's just what, was on the, <laughs> just what was on the wall. A lot of the Telecaster players <laughs> prefer the uh, black. maple cap thing as well. Maple cap thing, but they only did it for a certain length of time. Yes, they did. So another thing about <laughs> Hendrix was that the guitar was bog standard. Yeah. Oh, obviously, that way around, wasn't it? With the... Well, you know what? Mm. Stevie Ray Vaughan did that with the tremolo didn't he he yeah. he bought a left-handed tremolo arm mm. to copy hendrix's tremolo technique right. and i've always fancied doing that because mm. when i'm playing i hate going oh, to grab that yeah, yeah 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 and or you've got the kind of uh, jeff beck thing where you kind of like i've thought about buying a left-handed strat and just trying it i've yeah. thought about it you know well, the other thing people talk about is because obviously it was this way round, but restrung. So the pickup staggers are the other way round. And of course, there's this one, which is oh yes, of course they are, which is wrong as well, isn't it? Yeah. So that and the tension is that right? The tent string length yeah, as well. Yeah. Because then you've got the uh, longer bit up yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. So that all makes a difference, but having. Having messed around with it, I think that's the final details. Not many people get close enough to even be considering those things but, as part of getting a But Hendrix that's what sound. they're trying to sell people these days. Isn't it, it is, and that's such a tiny difference. The stagger on that, the stagger on this. Really, the yeah. biggest difference is, uh, you know, just get a strap. Just get one with decent pickups on. Mm. And, you know... Some of these ones were using heavy form VAR and some of them were plain enamel. Right. So they're two very different pickups. Mm. And also, um, what's his name? Roger Mayer, mm. who did some stuff with him. Oh, the effects boxes and stuff. Yeah, and was also mm. Hendrix's guitar tech for yeah. bits. Yeah. He decided that the pickups made very little difference to Hendrix's sound at all. He right. rewound some for Hendrix. Right and thought, well, it's not making much difference. And we know they all make a difference, but the, the other thing he said, he gave him a, a custom string set because he had worked out that um, the string gauges, you don't go off how tight it feels, you go off how much noise it makes for the tension of the string. So mm. they sound more evenly balanced. Mm. So he ended up with a 10 on the high E, right. going down to kind of, a really thin 38 yeah it's, yeah really? yeah on the so. uh, yeah oh my god you holding the guitar like that looks right a strat the right way around to me doesn't look right no, that's how it, it should look so cool that's how it used should to look. seeing hendrix he's so yeah. iconic isn't he yeah, that's how but it i suppose look. you've seen more of him than most people haven't you mm. playing it with a 42 there and a mm. nine there is out of balance yeah it's too bass heavy mm. and that's better maybe for a chordal instrument mm. but for all the lead was mm. hendrix was doing mm. it worked better then of course he tuned down didn't he 
E yeah. flat, then a D, and I've heard a recording of him playing Catfish Blues, and he must be in, playing in C. It's yeah. gone right down to C. Right, it must yeah. be. It's so low and so bendy and filthy. The first record was standard, but then if you listen to Berkeley 1970, okay, he's in standard tuning. Right, yeah, is he? Pitch, yeah, yeah, for most of it. Yeah, because of most of it. Uh, so he's playing Voodoo Child in standard tuning, and yeah. it does sound different, yeah. a lot different. Yeah, it will do. And then the next gig, he's back down again. Maybe yeah. you just tried it out. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I Who think, knows? Yeah. I genuinely <laughs> think with Hendrix, he just did what he felt at the time, and yeah. some days yeah. he felt like a standard tuning guy, and some, <laughs> yeah. gay, de- de- gays. some, some days, days yeah. he, he, he felt like a flat guy. Yeah. And uh, some and it came uh, <laughs> all down to to how he was at the time, you know. You play it so it's floating, and Hendrix only did that at the end, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, there's all these debates about these details, you know. It's like but they changed. He had it floating on that record because I heard it go up at 0.29. Oh. So if you want to sound like Hendrix. Then don't play the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did. did he? he did. He did that one. Did he? That's did why he? I was playing it. Yeah. You're kidding me. Did I just hear you play it? And that's why I played it. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? I wasn't that's listening. Really amazing. Yeah. No, it is. <laughs> I, I wasn't listening. It's like watching someone eating breakfast and going, "I really fancy bacon." <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. I wasn't listening. I, and I must have heard it without even knowing I'd heard it, and then played it. Yeah. So he, if you want to sound like Hendrix, sarcastic kids. A strat is a great thing <laughs> the, to the do. Strat's uh, the one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is the one, really. It doesn't matter which pickups, as long as they're good pickups. If you're getting a uh, Squire, Squire mm. strats will do the job, no problem at all, will yeah, they? Yeah. You know, you're just maybe having to spend a bit more time setting up your guitar. But I think if you don't know how to set up a guitar, don't buy an American strat. Do you know why? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell us. I think if you're a player, you should know how to set up your own guitar. Yeah. Because it you <laughs> the different actions you get, the different things nuts you get, the way you sure. sand the frets are all really important. And if you go buying an American guitar and you're a beginner and you've spent a fortune on a guitar, you're gonna be like, oh I don't wanna set this one up, I might Fuck it up. I'll take it to uh, the guitar tech to set up for me, and he'll set it up. How he know, likes how it. How he likes it, or what yeah, the standard yeah, yeah. thing is, or he'll yeah. ask you, and you don't really know how you'd like it because you haven't tried all these things out. So you're better off mm. starting on a cheaper guitar, messing around with it, putting different pickups in, messing <coughs> up the soldering to begin with till you learn how to do it, messing up the intonation. Getting high action, low action. Hendrix played quite high action yeah. with thin strings. Yeah, you know? where, do you, where do you stop though? Where, where, like your self <laughs> setup, where do you stop? Do you stop at sanding the frets down? Or whatever you call it. Maybe, well, you see how you enjoy it and you take to it. And um, Floating course. You'd be making yeah. some serious expensive errors, couldn't you? Yeah, you, you know, could. if you really didn't know. But if you're starting on a cheap guitar, so what? Yeah. You know, yeah. because, I mean, what's but, the worst case? Then you take it, if you can afford an American Strat, yeah. you know, is what I'm saying. Yes. Don't spend the money on it if you don't know how to set up guitars. Got you. Start on the Squire, <coughs> you'll end up with a better guitar for you than you would buying an American standard Strat and mm. never touching the setup. Yes, well, yeah. Floating, uh, yeah. floating is, is the tuning issue, isn't it? Floating. I'm yeah. always floating, I'm always tuning. Yeah. I think if I had it on the body, I'd be doing that a lot less, you know? Yeah, yes, you would. You would. Yeah. yeah, definitely. This sort of thing. Pick like Hendrix. Let, let's talk a little bit about how to play like Hendrix then. He played a lot over here. Yes, he did. It oh. sounds good there. That's over the bridge. The bridge picker. I can't remember which way around it is, but you're defeating 
odd harmonics right. playing there. Is that right? I and don't you're know. promoting evens or something. It yes. Yeah. It just sounds more fuller and hollow somehow. Fuller and hollow. There it's got. Yeah. But he did all of it, actually. These words, they're totally undescriptive, they, aren't Yeah. They? It's very difficult to describe. Yeah. But it. Play it there. Oh, attack there, isn't it? Can't attack it there because the fretboard's there as well. Apparently, yes. it reduces your attack. Yeah. So, how do you hold the pick? Hendrix didn't hold a pick upside down the wrong way around like you do. No. I think I hold it there quite a lot because it's a fuller sound. Okay. Because. Some strats can sound a bit thin, can't they? Yeah. So you do everything you can to make it fatter. Yeah. So I think actually playing with the thick side of the pick and not hitting it too hard. Not to me. I was playing yeah. with that side of the pick, gripping it more. But playing with the fat side, gently playing. Okay, yeah. But then sometimes you hit it, you know. Yeah, hard, yeah. Don't you? Yeah. To emphasise things, you know. So it's good for people to have all that range in their palette. So because yeah. Hendrix did, didn't he? He had all these mm. textures and everything from how he hit the strings. I've seen him use his fingers as well. Yeah. But I think a strat is so responsive to things like that, isn't it? More oh, so really? than yeah, yeah. Other guitars, isn't it? Massively. Hendrix pickup positions. So why would you change between pickup positions when you're playing Hendrix? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, give it, give it some playing. We'll see when you go from one. rhythm and then the thing on it and then you get these two don't you where it's more that wind cries Mary type sound isn't it and sometimes he used the middle position didn't he what for I don't know if he used that position there a lot because it wasn't available, was it? Well, you could jam the pickups. Yeah, that's what I, I used to it. do. Right. Yeah. I used to do that. Yeah. So we did it more in the studio then, perhaps for that in between. Yeah. And live, I don't think I hear him doing it live. No, but that's But he used true. the middle one, didn't he? And he kind of, like that guy was saying the other day, and he, he kind of pinches the notes on the middle pickup, like. Hendrix fuzz face. bad as I thought it was going to be. I've always had trouble with fuzz faces and, and big muffs and that uh, because they do this, uh, it's like farting. But so. you can clean it up. You can go back on here. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's the great thing with the fuzz face too. But that's it's... <laughs> Wow. 
but yeah, that that really works. I mean, the fuzz face. Mm. If there's any kind of effects, for, I know he's famous. The wah wah at the beginning of Voodoo Child is iconic. Yeah. But the biggest thing in his effects arsenal that kind of clarifies him as Hendrix is the fuzz face and the mm. way he uses that, isn't it? Yeah. Picks and fingers. Some people play quite like a bass, like Albert Collins and some of the blues guys, and. So you can get away with, it, it gives a bit more roundness to the sound. Mm. But if you snap the strings, then it can sound way too trebly on the treble pickup. Mm. That's yeah. a bad example of it. Well, uh, country. Yes. For that, for that brightness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for the definition of the. There is more articulation to plucking with your fingers, I think. But with the with the plectrum, it goes warmer. So on this guitar, what guitar? You've only got a <laughs> third of it left. What was it? Two thirds. A B. You got a B. <laughs> you got a B. Anyone got a B? Honey. That was a B. You don't need all your strings, son. Hmm. So, anyway, yeah. Well, you've broken two strings. Yeah. So you can kind of do more leady stuff up there. Whereas it goes. It does sound more attacky. Snappy, doesn't yeah. It? It's yeah. A snap, isn't it? So I think. You know, I tend to, when I'm using my fingers, which is all the time. It's definitely snappy. I just snap two strings. <laughs> <laughs> the, they're not picky. They're not picky, are they? They're snappy. Yes. Definitely. There are some things that are impossible to do with a plectrum that you can with your fingers. Mm. Yes. Yeah. But it's kind of almost more versatile. Play <laughs> The only thing you can't do, which I can't do with a patch sure. anyway, is the... You can only do that with a plaque, can't you? Greek music does it all the time. <laughs> was that with or without? That was without. Ooh. That's what, I, no, that, that's what no. I mean, I can't do no. it, but... Sometimes I can... A little bit it's in not it, far but off, not quite. It? It's not yeah. far off. <laughs> that's yeah, funny. That's, can... good, that's actually a funny sound. That's good. Yeah. Oh, it's like a duck. Plectrum. Yes, you can't yeah, do it. You can't do it with your fingernails. <laughs> you can actually kind of hit it louder with a plectrum as well. Defined with yeah. my fingers. Does it make a difference if you're you were saying between the snap, yeah, and the, uh, a, a pick, yeah? Well, you're pulling. Uh, so what the what the what's, okay? What's the? Um, Should we do that with the plec? Sounds <laughs> very similar. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't, would you? No, yeah, it'd be yeah. really hard. Yeah, but it'd be like that, pulling. <laughs> but from the pickup's point of view, in terms of uh, a magnetic, you know, um, flux and how it how it works. Yeah. The string is uh, going away, and then it's slamming down through the magnetic field. Yeah, isn't you're it? right. So coming closer. Yes, and it's coming closer. So that's kind of distorting it a bit. Uh, Yep, that's a definite point. And then the other thing is, if it's going side to side, yes, it's not doing as fret buzzy. That's right, yeah. Whereas if it's going up and down, the frets become more of the sound. Yeah, it's snapping against the f one of the frets. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, just, it just kind of flops off the top of the strings, you know. Have you ever yeah. have you tried that? <laughs> no, but one of my teachers had a willy exerciser. 
I was in the studio and there was this guy playing bass and he could do this as fast as Dick Dale. That. As fast as Dick Dale, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, I've met some, a lad who, who had a, a very, very supple thumb joint <laughs> and great control over it. And he could, he could do uh, basically, <laughs> basically that, but with his thumb from that hinge there, it was amazing. Yes. I can do that quite fast, but then my finger's one shorter than the other and that one just misses the string. <laughs> We're all so different, aren't we? We are, yeah. yeah. But the other thing is pick material, isn't it? You know, you can use yeah. light picks. Mm. Nylon, nylon, cellulose. So, I like the cellulose. Stone. Celloid. Stone. Celloid ones myself. Coins. Coins. Brian May. You can use Brian May as a pick. Trouble is, his hair gets in the way. <laughs> <laughs> so no sooner have um, you picked the note, it's brushed it aside. Yeah, the old badger. It's brushed it aside. The That's old a... badger. <laughs> all the teachers, all the female teachers in my son's school have Brian May haircuts. Do they? They do. Yeah, there's a lot of Welsh women with Brian May. Yeah, it <laughs> With cutting edge, isn't it? Triangle. It's basically yeah, a triangle. Triangle. It is that it would spin round because any, ed any edge was the same as the other. Yeah. You know, it's like a wankle rotary engine. That's wankle rotary engine <laughs> uh, shape. Um, but because it's uniform, it doesn't have like, you've got to hold it here and there's your edge. Any of the edges were usable. And it just used to spin round in my fingers. Why? What so, if you hit a flat spot? Well, exactly. You'd, then you'd turn it round and you'd have another edge to work with, but mm. I, I had to give it up. If I start thinking about my plaque drum, where I'm holding it, oh, that feels a bit weird today. It's, I can't play the fucking thing, because yes. I'm thinking about yes. it. Yes. I, yeah, yeah, whenever I play a plaque drum, it becomes, oh, the thing's turning slightly. Oh, you haven't got quite the same angle, so I end up chucking it away. But I prefer a plectrum for the chorus. Yeah. yeah. Rather than... That's a bit less consistent. Yeah. This is a more consistent sound. Yeah. You know, when you... You use your thumb as well, though, don't you? Fingers. It's all right, though, isn't it? Yeah, it goes duller. Randomly goes duller. It's not as predictable. But it's yeah. just, it's it's pretty damn good without your plaque in it. Yeah, you were doing only because I've it. practiced doing it, but uh, it still isn't as good. You're as catching it with your nails. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't but got But it's any the same. Nails. It's going to sound different that way to that way because of the flesh. And you've been careful with it because you'll rip your nail off oh, if you yeah. if yeah. you get it consistent on the way back. <laughs> yeah. Nice. But yeah, it's very um, easy on those kind of things, and I do this kind of. Oh. Which is an odd riff. That's good. Not many people play that. Things like that would be really hard to do with a plectrum. That's right, yeah. There are, yeah, as, as I say, I think it's more versatile with your fingers, just yeah. generally. But also the range of tones you can get, like you were talking about playing here and here, but there's also kind of those snaps to kind of And then if you play with your fingernail up here. And um, even sort of, I do this thing where I'm flicking the string.
kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, there, no, that, yeah, that's kind of your, one of your trademarks. Gonna need though. a reef for it after being that. here. Yeah, 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 but with your <laughs> didn't hear that, did you? with the strings <laughs> muted, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> didn't hear that, did you? Gonna need a reef for it after being here. Yeah? No, I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> 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 But he's putting it away he's now. He's putting look, it away. He's yeah. it off now. Look at that. I think it's just getting whatever you're most comfortable with. To, yeah. And also listening to it and finding out, you know, is that doing the tone I want? Getting ready to play, like pull the strings <laughs> and in shuffle the fretboard, doesn't he? What gauge strings do you use? I'm ready. Well, these it must these, be 11s. These surely. are these are nines on this guitar. I bet you break them all the time. <laughs> That's why there's only four of them left. Uh, um, do you usually have tens? Do you? I prefer I prefer 11s or 12s, but I have to play them regularly. Right. If I don't, then it it becomes a uh, mm. It becomes messy. Mm. But I imagine that, you know. The problem is if I play them for tuning the amps, then I'm tuning to strings people don't normally play, and yeah. the, the amps sound, uh, they haven't got enough presence. Right. So what I do is I kind of tune it to sound right with normal strings and mm. normal guitars. Mm. So when you plug in, and then it's up to you, and you can always back off the kind of presence of the amp it's really hard to add it <laughs> yeah that no, that's sense. true that's very true yeah so if your amp sounds really good with nines i mean m most amps you plug into kind of any clean amp or whatever mm. you can make it sound really good by putting heavy strings on so i gave my amp presents but um it didn't appreciate them <laughs> so yeah. you're playing a plectrum really yeah I yes, do a lot of those. It has. Yeah. It's just uh, very gentle, really. Yeah, you do play very gentle with your hands compared to me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of it is still hanging onto the plectrum. Are you just videoing the cup? Uh, it looks like I am. <laughs> he is. He is. is he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long have you been videoing the cast? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven years. <laughs> no, I just put it. A slow motion cut. <laughs> Imagine that. That it's worse. It's worse. It's not just the cut. Slow it's the dark. Slow. It's in slow motion yeah. as well. Therefore, no audio. Uh, we have to say, we went to the London Guitar Show and I sent Martin off with his camera to do some interviews with people around the show. And he interviewed <laughs> everybody in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my special <laughs> guitar. On next month's show, we'll show you how to set up your amp to get a Hendrix tone. We'll show you some quick and easy ways to play like Hendrix. We'll be having a massive Stratocaster shootout including a pre-CBS Strat, and we'll be trying loads of Strat mods out to see if we can recreate the pre-CBS tone for less than £500. And don't forget to enter the free draw for our £1,200 hand-wired valve combo giveaway. All you have to do is like and subscribe, and like our Filthy Amplification Facebook page, which is linked to below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out our other videos if you haven't already.